Hello there everyone, this is 5 Minutes Medicine and today we will talk about shock which is a pathological condition where the blood flow to the body reduces and becomes dangerously low and which can lead to multiple organ failure and even cause death in certain conditions. So as we all know that oxygen is required by our cells for performing cellular respiration which is responsible for providing essential energy to carry out the function. But if oxygen-rich blood supply decreases in a large amount, it might lead to severe consequences like cellular injury, multiple organ failure, and might even cause death in certain conditions. As for the types of shock, it can be divided into three main types namely hypovolemic shock, which occurs mainly due to decreased amount of blood, and which can be further classified into hemorrhagic shock and non-hemorrhagic shock. Cardiogenic shock, which occurs due to inadequate cardiac functioning and is classified into two types, namely obstructive type and non-obstructive type. And finally, the distributive shock, which occurs due to excessive dilation of blood vessels, leading to decreased flows of blood. And it's further divided into anaphylactic type and neurogenic type. Now, before we jump into characteristics of shock, let's get familiar with some terms like heart rate, Respiratory rate, systemic vascular resistance, which means the resistance offered by the blood vessels to the blood flow, and MVO2, which means the oxygen level returning to the heart by major veins. So as you can see, the heart rate, respiratory rate, and SVR increases in both hypovolemic and cardiogenic shock, but decreases in the distributive one, whereas MVO2 and temperature increases in distributive shock but decreases in the other two. So because of this increase in MVO2 and temperature, distributive shock is termed as a hot shock, whereas the other two are termed as cold ones. As for the management, the primary treatment of shock involves damage control, where we do limited infusion of crystalloids first. Around 2 liters is the upper limit, but if the patient is not responding well, then we don't keep adding the fluid, rather we replace blood by blood. And if the patient is losing excessive blood, don't increase the blood pressure, that is, allow permissive hypotension, and try reaching the mean arterial pressure of 65 to 70 millimeters of mercury, and then infuse hypertonic saline and recombinant factors. Once the damage control is done, Try finding out the root cause of the condition and treat it properly. Medications for shock may include drugs which increases heart's contractility, which are drugs like adrenaline, non-adrenaline, dopamine, etc. Other inotropes like digoxin can be used too. Antibiotics can be given if there is any presence of infection in the patient, and symptomatic treatment can be done providing supplemental oxygen, analgesics, etc. One important point to note is that crystalloids are used for IV resuscitation rather than colloids in initial phase of shock. It is because colloids in some patients can induce furthermore allergic reactions and it can leak to surrounding tissue from the damaged blood vessels, drugging out more fluid and making the condition even worse. So that's it for today. If you liked the video and found it helpful as well as informative, please help the channel to grow by liking, sharing and subscribing it. Thank you. See you until next time.